Hey boys, long have you waited and the patch notes for the next time are here. We'll be reading everything. Maybe uh, I'll just not gonna read everything as multiplayer in the sentence, but uh, nearly everything. So these are the patch notes for uh, the update called the Total Va update. Oh Thank you God. everyone. Have you seen that uh, there's a video here uh, that shows uh, Warren Punch patch in less than five minutes. They at least a video alongside it, cause look at that, look at that, look at it. It's so much text, so much text. Let's see what the what what this is. Five minutes. Starting with this. This update arrives alongside the Warden and the Paunch Lords pack, bringing with it many content revisions, balances, bug fixes and quality of life improvements to the Eye of the Vortex and Mortal Empires campaigns. Even if you haven't purchased the Warden and the Paunch, Altharia and the Grim, Grom de Paunch and their attendant factions of Ivress and the Broken Axe tribe will appear in your campaigns under AI control. The big news is the long-awaited Greenskins rework. The old war mechanics, where a Greenskins army years, would boys. hit peak fightiness and spawn a second AI-controlled companion army, are gone for good. A war is now a huge faction-wide event, which mirrors those of Legend. Awa is now something players can strategize and plan around, where expertise nets you bigger rewards, the bigger the challenge. You now have full control over all aspects of the WA. There's so much, we've made a playlist of our favorite rework videos and slapped it in the description, so check it out if you want to know more. We've also reworked a ton of mechanics such as ammo consumption for volley and burst fire weapons, as well as legendary lord characteristics. But we always want to deliver you those more subtle quality of life changes as well. Drop us a comment if you have an idea for a small tweak that will have a large positive impact for Total War Warhammer 2 players. And if you don't have an idea, drop us a comment anyway. It helps us make more videos like this. As usual, we've spruced up the Mortal Empires map, this time with a Badlands flavored update. Four new Skaven factions have appeared in the world. Clan oh. Vulcan have emerged from their warrens beneath Fire Mountain and now control parts of the Eastern Badlands. Clan Ferric have claimed parts of the Zuthbar province. Is Clan so, Spittle can be found so in Festa Spike the region of the Grey Mountains previously known as Grimhold, and Clan Creepers have been dispatched by their masters, Clan Eschen, in pursuit of a certain Warpstone meteorite. The dwarves of Clan Helhein, exiled from their homes in the Dragonback Mountains, have headed to the Plain of Bones in search of dragon hordes, much to the distaste of a certain dragon prince. Speaking of which, Imric, the Lord of Dragons and direct descendant of the Phoenix King, swoops into battle alongside the Warden and the Paunch for free. You should definitely check out Cody Bond's guide to Imric if you want to know more. I've linked it, as well as Imric's Steam page, in the description below. There's been a slew of campaign balance changes as well. The High Elves have received a mini rework to keep them fighting fit, and there's battle balance changes too. Stop me if you've heard this one before. You've recruited a fresh-faced group of Chameleon Skinks to support your Saurus push, the lines clash, and the Skinks start volleying the enemy, then you realize you've poisoned your own troops again. Poison and other contact effects on ranged weapons have long been a double-edged sword. Friendly fire meant you could poison your own troops just as readily as the enemies, leaving you with a zero-sum result. With this update, friendly fire will still cause damage, but will never inflict debilitating contact effects on your own units. Damn, this also applies to vortices, nice bombardments, and other sources of friendly fire debilitation, all except for poisoned wind. Strider has long been an estranged attribute, providing niche benefits that were hard to take advantage of. We've significantly expanded its behavior with this rework. This will also affect the woodsman attribute, Strider units now feel more snappy and responsive, being able to rocket up the hills that dot almost all maps without losing pace, this is a big while passing through trees arches. allows them unparalleled mobility within densely forested areas. As part of reworking Strider, we've also re-evaluated where it is available. It is now granted by certain ancillaries, and more units have gained Strider. Previously, if a unit was interrupted during a volley or burst fire attack, they would lose any remaining ammunition in that volley or burst. This was especially punishing for units like warp fire throwers and rattling guns. These units will now correctly retain the ammunition that they didn't fire when they were interrupted, so they don't lose out on any damage potential. We carried on evolving the stat lines and costs of our older units to keep them relevant in the post warden and paunch world. Bugwise, the headline is the splash damage calculation fixes. We've addressed two important bugs with our splash damage system relating to how damage is calculated, and it should now splash a lot more consistently. There's been a no ton more, more bug fixes, so check out for the full patch damage, huh? to find out more. Similarly, projectile short range spell damage reliability should go up significantly thanks to additional bug fixes. 
we rebalanced quite a few spells and abilities whilst we were at it. Finally, we recently ran an experimental beta called the Proving Grounds to test some more extreme changes to in-game systems and mechanics without affecting the main game. We've implemented a few minor changes based on our learnings from beta feedback and may look at implementing more in the future. So thanks for participating and thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Okay, so this was the uh, the short video they put, uh, the five minutes about this, but uh, look at this wall of text here. Look at this wall of text. <laughs> when was the last patch notes video? Holy shit, it's been so long. So long, patch notes. The last one was the, the potion uh, of speed update. Holy shit! Over five months? Five months, boys! Haven't had a uh, patch notes in over five months. Okay, so English uh, English here. Uh, this automatic update arrives alongside the War and the Punch Lord spec, bringing with it many content revisions, balances, bug fixes, and quality of life improvements to the Eye of the Vortex and Mortal Empires campaigns. Even if you haven't purchased the War and the Punch, Altarium the Green, Grom the Punch, and their intended faction of Everest and the Broken Axe Tribe will appear in your campaign under AI control. We have reworked a whole ton of. Uh, Mechanics such as ammo consumption for volley and burst fire weapons, legendary lore characteristics, and blue on blue contact effect rules. But to complement the uh, reemergence of the mighty punch, the big news is long awaited green skins rework. Let's get at them, boys. Call to war. The old war mechanics where the uh, green skin army would uh, hit uh, pick fightiness and spawn a second AI control companion army are gone for good. Ava is now a huge faction wide event which mirrors those of legend. Ava is now some players can strategize and plan around. Where expertise nets you bigger rewards, the bigger the challenge. You now have full control over all aspects of the VA. The VA before was. Uh, it still is, I many years, still two more days. Uh, you had a requirement of at least 17 units in the army and a fightiness 80 or higher. Uh, when these conditions are met, uh, you would get a, a AI faction, which is unmarkedly allied to you, uh, which would spawn uh, uh, units depending uh, on the size, if you had full, and also some of the quality. Uh, could vary between factions, but it killed all the e e initiative, all the advantage, because you, uh, you do the biggest advantage is when you're doing the attacking. When you have to rely on the AI following you around to uh, reinforce, you lose all the advantage, so you absolutely get nothing. And uh, with this also came the attachment, of course, of uh, diplomacy, because if they, if they get immediately destroyed, uh, you get uh, the ability penalty as well. They would also, you know, be uh, subject to the balance of power issues, how to resolve, you know, the 50-50. And of course, being not favored against most other factions, they're just being next to useless. Next to useless. Uh, when a point comes where uh, they actually are doing good, uh, the VAS, you know, then provides some advantage. But when you actually need them, they were never really uh, providing an advantage because, you know, losing initiative is, is bad. Being the other attack is the uh, is when you get the most advantage. And uh, they were really never providing that advantage. Uh, so what is next here? Reputation this is a new Greenskin mechanic. Greenskin now have a faction-wide resource called Reputation. There's a bar on the top. Reputation is generated by fighting battles. Hard for defeats grant more reputation than easy victories. Reputation does not deteriorate uh, and builds up to a maximum value of 100. So it does not deteriorate. So uh, doing well, doing good in campaign, you build up uh, faction-wide bonuses. From 0 to 100, the reputation meter will affect the faction. The more reputation you get, the more bonuses your faction gets. Once 100 reputation is reached, a call to VA can be triggered by the player. Uh, call to VA. When the player hits 100 reputation, a call to VA button becomes available. Clicking this allows you to target an enemy faction's capital city. You then choose between following either Gork or Morg, who grant you specific benefits for duration of the call to Va. When a call to Va is called, all own armies will get additional mobs attached to them that will be filled with units up to the number of units in the primary army at that point. 
Wham mobs will grow to their full potential over several turns as the boys get their mastering. Uh, do we have the Spanish guy counter? Uh, do we really need a Spanish guy counter? Uh, odd text. Um, who knows? Who knows? Maybe we played more than once. 50. Zero. Give me some red. Give me some red. Outline. 50. Bold. Bigger. Okay, there you go. There you go. Spanish guy counted zero so far. Uh, okay. Mobs are populated uh, with appropriate units for the region as well as specific units according to the faction leader. So different region and different uh, faction leaders imagine different units. Uh, the new VA battle ability below is upgraded to a more powerful version during a call to VA. The call to VA has a set duration. Success is achieved if the target capital is player occupied at the end of the call to VA duration or raised during the call to VA. Depending on the culture and strength of the selected enemy, a reward trophy will be granted if successful. VA mobs. Uh, these arms are available for use for duration of the call to VA and will disperse when it ends. VA mobs are not led by characters and cannot exist on their own. They will reinforce their primary army in all battles with the exception of interceptions and ambushes. Okay, so uh, the war army will not be present if uh, the main army gets uh, intercepted or ambushed. At the end of the call to war, the reputation bit will reset to zero. So zero is the over the tier one with the penalties. A successful call to war is achieved by either raising the targeted capital or owning it at the end of the duration. Depending on the success of the call to VAR, a specific trophy based on the performance of the VAR will be granted. If a stronger foe was selected and defeated, the reward is greater. Trophies are flavored around different racial groups, elves, humans, etc. A successful VAR will also grant you some reputation straight away instead of leaving you at zero to continue the momentum uh, uh, towards another future war. So that's So you're not going to end up in penalties if you had a successful VAR. It's kind of, you know, the, the Greens got their, you know, kind of like a... Crusade system, you could say, which you know uh, has to build up, and then it gets to build up again, and then you can get the rewards depending on the success. Rewards uh, uh, could be quite strong, faction-wide stuff. The thing is, somebody mentioned to me uh, days ago that uh, there are some bonuses that are so powerful that you might never really want to have a successful va ever again. So you have to decide if you want to actually enhance your armies with a uh, with one mob and uh, get stronger for duration of it uh, to another target at the cost of losing some really powerful bonuses because the uh, the trophy the, the next one uh, will replace the previous one and I feel like this uh, I feel like uh, uh, I feel like you should be keeping uh, the successful trophies throughout the campaign. But this gets replaced, and this is kind of counter, uh, you know, counterproductive. But of course, we're gonna have to see uh, how it works in the game and how it affects the game. But if you get a really powerful trophy, you never really wanna get another successful one, and you just keep a max bonus. Then they should really allow you which trophy you wanna use, and maybe even the stacking trophies for the rest of the campaign. Okay. Depending on the strength of the enemy faction, defeated special VA units will be awarded as well. Uh, VA Confederation. Similar to Norska, if a Greenskin faction leader is beaten in a battle, his faction can be absorbed through Confederation. It's not similar, it's the same. Alternatively, uh, alternatively uh, the leader can be executed, if not legendary, or released. Uh, we've seen this on their uh, live stream. Basically, uh, there's like no upside to this. Uh, they didn't uh, really add any any special things to this. No upset whatsoever. You kill the leader, they hate you. You release the leader, they like you. But why would you want your enemy to, to like you or hate you even further? Makes no sense. They forgot to, you know, expand a little bit on this and uh, add more stuff. Like, uh, releasing the leader, uh, you know, could uh, 
could be something kind of like a, a negative with a positive big money for example while executing him would should really grant you like a permanent uh, bonus for the rest of the campaign because you missed the confederation instead or, or at least an event that lasts at least 10 turns they kind of missed, uh, uh, missed stuff here this is, should also be a page to the north as well because you, you pick between confederation huge bonus uh, releasing the leader, you get the relations with that faction which you've been fighting with, which would pretty much mean no effect. And executing the leader, and they actually like you on the first one, then executing the leader, they'll actually hate you further. The, the second and third option are kind of pointless. They're pointless, there should be at, uh, various bonuses attached to it permanent bonuses or temporary bonuses. Probably for uh, releasing the leader, you should get lots of money. But, you know, there's some penalties that should be also be happening to your faction, maybe a reputation or a negative public order obedience. And executing the leader should be like a buff for 10 turns faction-wide uh, to various things, or just, or even a permanent buff for the rest of the campaign. Because you uh, choosing to execute the leader instead of confederating, or at least the leader instead of confederating, there's, uh, there should be you know rewards for those options, and I I think really uh, everybody can agree there is the, the other two options are almost pointless. Va Bell ability to work. Previously, Ginsky Lords had a Va Bell ability granting a variety of bonuses to their army, but the ability took too long to unlock in single player, and in multiplayer quick battles, it encouraged the opponent to snipe the Ginsky Lord, thereby removing the ability from the bell. So it was the uh, final uh, character skill. It would uh, give uh, map wide battle buffs, uh, attack and charge. To address this, VA is now an army ability. Uh, every entity engaged in melee combat generates VA points on the meter is filled and the ability is unlocked for you. So, Greens get another meter, which is in battles. And uh, when they, they fight, they generate this meter. And when it's full, you click a button on the side, and uh, your whole army gets bonuses uh, depending on your uh, faction leader for 18 seconds. Uh, the effects have changed from speed and charge bonus buffs to buff melee attack and damage. I think it was a charge, uh, might have been speed and uh, attack before. So now it's uh, melee attack and damage, plus uh, the immunity to psychologic psychology effect, fear and terror. All of which are more uh, useful for units already engaged in melee. The threshold for unlocking the ability scales with the army size, so the more units you bring, the higher the threshold. It also encourages you to bring large entity count units like goblins. More entities means you generate points quicker, even if goblins don't always survive long enough to see the ability used. In the uh, in campaign, each legend lord has their own unique VA ability that either increases one of the existing effects or adds uh, an additional effect to the normal VA. These unique abilities are not available in multiple quick battles. Green skin scrap. Not sure, guys, if you uh, watched my uh, jibber jabber video where we talked about the worst uh, faction in Mortal Empress, uh, the green skins, but uh, we had uh, uh, quite a bit of these uh, suggestions. But you know, some things have been obvious to for the Greenskins. Uh, the Greenskin Scrap, all Greenskins factions have access to a new resource called Scrap, reflecting their tendency to scavenge items for bells or settlements to inven inven inventively improve their gear. So basically a new resource uh, which you can choose uh, one or two or three uh, additional aggregates to your units. Like uh, more attack, more anti infantry, more large, depending on actually on the unit. It's not the same for all units, but some are more useful than the others. And of course, the higher ones will, uh, will cost more. Scavenge scrap from battles or through occupation options. Use scrap to unlock special technology nodes. Use scrap to upgrade units. It's also used for technology as well. We've seen this on uh, the two CA streams we watched, uh, uh, they were showing some of this stuff. Unit Upgrades. Each recruit Greenskin unit can access a new panel where they benefit from one of several upgrade options. Upgrading a unit will cost a certain amount of scrap. Each unit in your army will be able to choose and keep an upgrade individually. Each unit will have several different upgrade options to bring one unit's existing strengths or uh, adding new functionality. 
Okay. Uh, green skin legendary lord abilities. We also looked at the green skin legendary lord's abilities and decided some of them needed some love. We added the following abilities to these characters. Uh, for Grimgor, best of the best, new defense ability when enemy characters are nearby. Your next targeted uh, slow and debuff uh, on enemy characters. Bloodforge armor, magical explosion on himself that also grants Grimgor some armor for a short time. Well, I do hope. Uh, uh, they didn't forget that uh, you don't need all these abilities to unlock the final ability. Like with the new faction, you just need two and not all four. Like for example, the Azak need all four to unlock his final, and not all of them good. Yoo-hoo! Azak, uh, Azak's art armor, defensive buff for Azak and allies nearby. Slaga, uh, Slaga slashes, passive morale, defensive buff for Azak and allies nearby. So I guess uh, they're showing the uh, they're telling about new ones, not the ones that have been changed. Uh, Scar Snick fermented fungi target debuff on enemy that can cause rampage. So Scar Snick gets only one change, and the other guys get two or more. Uh, Night Golden War Boss fermented fungi target debuff on enemy that can cause rampage. Uh, the boss loons summon some Night Goblin fanatics to speed into the enemy. Uh, that's actually pretty good. Night Goblin Warboss is one of the Greenskin Lords that's been added with the uh, uh, with the uh, King and the Warlord uh, DLC in Warhammer 1. Orc Warboss, uh, also available for the other Lords in the campaign. Uh, smash him faster, morale and offensive buff for himself and allies nearby. I feel like uh, the Orc Boss, Warboss, probably has been forgotten uh, like the General of the Empire. Uh, Goblin Great Shaman don't even try damage ability that targets an enemy and increases their ability cooldowns. Goblin uh, uh, Big Boss, uh, they need stabbing. Defense debuff for target enemy character uh, also answers the age old question who needs stabbing. So, uh, we've been talking about this uh, many times. The Goblin Big uh, Boss. If you're gonna put him in the army, of course, a little bit extra loot is good. But as a hero, he's been super lacking. He's a rogue hero, which liked uh, uh, abilities like hex abilities, like uh, abilities granted by the Helm of Discord, uh, Tormentor Sword, which was the only way to make him actually useful in battle. But now they actually added uh, an ability that can uh, all the, he only gets one, so you don't have to rely on getting items to get more abilities. Oh my god! Have you seen that shit? Holy shit! Thank you, you must. Uh, green skin campaign balance changes for Grimgor. Adjustment to initial army placements and diplomacy to improve early game flow. New build is added to skill tree. Ambush a thundering force quest battle now rewards a night goblin shaman instead of a goblin oh big boss. Oh, God. that's actually pretty good. Have you seen that shit? Holy shit! What Thank you, Wild Will Wonka. So, uh, ambush. You get a, a go Night Goblin Shaman instead of a Goblin Big Boss. Getting a Shaman instead of a Goblin Big Boss is pretty good. That's the early quest battle, I think. Azak is an... Uh, Azak is now... Azak... Azak now leads a separate faction. The Bone Rattlers, starting in Karak Ungor. So, Azak is one of the new factions. Uh, this is a leader for a new faction, starting above uh, Karakadrin. Uh... In, uh, the, in the Northern World Edge Mountains province, which also had been uh, added a new region. Uh, the old region that uh, was uh, to it has been attached to the uh, Peak Pass, which is uh, Karakadin province, uh, been buffed to three. So, looks like the Slayer King, uh, pretty much a big buff to the Slayer King, uh, having a Karakadin with three regions. Uh, the first uh, part of his death magic line no longer requires the crown of sorcery to unlock. So he started some death magic, which is great. Death magic uh, might be one of the worst lores in the game nowadays because of the multiplayer. But uh, having a death magic with uh, with orcs, you know, it's cool. It's cool. I wish uh, uh, the new hero they get uh, had something else than death magic, but uh, what can you do? Now has a suitable climate temperate. So Empire is temperate, so uh we can now go wreak havoc uh, in the Empire. 
Juhu. The Magic Relations bonus with Emperor Count's factions have been improved to plus 40 and now also applies to Ark and the Black. So he has better relations with vampires, so they work, can work together against the, uh, the Empire. Gains access to a new unique building in Nagashizer. Ooh. Ska, uh, Azak has a new unique building in Nagashizer. I wonder if it's uh, Azak only or for all the green skins. Because Azak has the kind of sorcery, which is the uh, powerful item from the uh, Nagash. So it kind of it makes sense. Uh, what is Nagashiz on the map in the uh, uh, Desolation of Nagash uh, area? This is uh, uh, far in the south, just north of uh, Lamia, east of the uh, Blightwater. Wurzak, jungle and desert are now suitable. Hallelujah. While frozen is now uninhabitable. Even Wurzak's vigorous dancing can make up for his lack of clothing. Damn, jungle and desert suitable for Wurzak? That's actually a big deal. New unique skill for Wurzak. Adjustments to initial army placement to improve early game, fl early game flow. Skarsnik. Adjustments to initial arm placement to improve early game flow. New unique skills. All factions. Uh, raiding camp stands no longer requires movement points to enter. That's a huge buff. This is a, a stance which enabled raiding for the greenskins. Not really beneficial if you're in your own region, but enabled replenishment. Also buffed melee defense and uh, leadership. I guess uh, now the fightiness has been removed. I get probably added uh, reputation or scrap attached to it now. So basically, in enemy territory, the fighting, chasing, and at the end, if you were not marching, you just check to the raiding camp and you get some replenishment even inside the enemy territory, which is quite a big deal. This is uh, this is huge. This is gonna help. Uh, another thing that will help with the green skin replenishment. General bug fixes and improvements, quality of life changes. Rights that spawn agents such as Pestilent Skin and Incantation of Petra now spawn an agent at the faction leader rather than the capital and can move and act on the turn they are created. Hallelujah! Praise Sigmar! Hands up! Healing effects can uh, now display their total healing for act abilities of their healing per second for constant passives. Oh, they can actually see the exact number now. We've seen uh, on the Grom Savard, it actually said exact, uh, the, uh, the exact amount, it will, uh, how much healing it will do. More information, always good in the strategy game, right? Uh, the fast forward option now remembers its state between end turns. The one you click on the top. Uh, preset unit calls given to Lord and Hero uh, variants in battle uh, now display on the campaign too. Mm -hmm. This uh, kind of reminds me that uh, uh, the Master Engineers had white outfits in the battles for some reason. Uh, I'm convinced that the fast forward button does jack shit. Well, if you have uh, your preset of the camera uh, options set up, uh, it will do jack shit. If you don't uh, set up your oh camera settings uh, on the top left, uh, it will do something. Thank you, Ramp Rampage. What is next? Uh, Confederate Lords will now skip directly to the final stage of their quest chains when they reach the required level for their items. This should dramatically reduce the number of cases where the quest chains would fail or become uncompletable due to the differences in infection mechanics. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This is a great change. We just need a respect change now, right? Mortal Empires map updates, Badlands update. Much of the territory previously belonging to the Red Fangs and the Karak Azul has been redistributed to new factions. Uh, the Red Fangs would have territories in the Dead Pass and the Eastern Badlands. Uh, also one in the Blight Water. Karak Azul had uh, been quite large uh, having the territories in uh, uh, the Southern... Uh, was it the 
Southern Village Mountains, uh, Eastern Badlands, Blightwater, and the New Regions. Yeah, the Arkazul was huge. Definitely were spots for uh, one or two more factions. There's a new factions added, so there are new minor factions, Skaven and Dwarves, like even the Greenskins, uh, I think. New province, Marshes of Madness. Always fun to see the new provinces added to the map. Just wish they expand the, the water part of the map around the last three and the Southlands. With two new regions, Floating Village and Morkheim. Uh, sounds like gonna be undead area. Marshes of Madness. In the Badlands, I guess it's uh, we've seen a part of the map change. Uh, there used to be a huge chunk of blight water, so the blight water got split, so it's smaller now. Like that uh, uh, un uh, inaccessible area in the in the center between the western Badlands, eastern Badlands, southern Badlands, and the blight water. So in the middle, that that looked like a bunch of swamp and ruins. Uh, the Sirikos Empire has relocated to the new marshes of Madness Province. Its former holdings in Zandri are now occupied by the top knots. In addition, uh, the mass necromancer leading the faction has resolved his identity crisis and is now named Kadon. Mm -hmm. So top knots now control Zandri. Meaning um, the top knots may get buffed again uh, whenever uh, they were actually nerfed once and now they got buffed again. I guess they'll, uh, they lost the region. Uh, uh, Didn't the, uh, the Altarion had a region starting in uh, Southern Badlands now, one of the coasts, when we were looking at uh, the map on uh, one of the reveals? So I guess they lost the port in the north and again Zandri in the, in the south. So I guess the top notes are going to be a similar size, just a little bit separate now. Uh, Karak Asgal has uh, been burned to the ground by the Great Dragon, Grog the Terrible. And now starts the campaign abandoned. Karak Asgal is the capital uh, of uh, Bly uh, Blightwater. So it looks like it's a ruin now. It used to be a city belonging to the, uh, the Red Fang. Karak Eight Peaks is now a 10 slot settlement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 10th slot for Karakate Peaks. Four new Skaven factions have appeared in the Old World. Clan Vulcan have emerged from their warrens beneath Fire Mountain and now control parts of the Eastern Badlands. Clan Fairy have claimed parts of Zubar province. Uh, looks like they cut the Zubar. Uh, no longer a superpower Zubar. So now instead it's actually started more balanced. Which will uh, slow down the Dwarf uh, uh, snowballing. So uh, next to the Vampire Counts, instead of having powerful Dwarf faction, they're going to be uh, two separate factions that might actually fight each other. Uh, Clan Spittal can be found in Fester Spike, the region of the Grey Mountains previously known as Grimhold. That's in the in the eastern area. Clan Crepus have been dispatched by their master Clan Ashen in pursuit of a certain warpstone meteorite. Clan Crepus. That sounds like uh, uh, that uh, uh, area in the Empire. What is called uh, Morheim. The dwarves of Clan Helheim, exiled from their home in the Dragonback Mountains, have headed to the Plain of Bones in search of dragon hordes, much to the distaste of a certain dragon prince. Plain of Bones is the forest of war, I think. In the absence of its former uh, Rotun master, the Skullcrab tribe have claimed Misty Mountain and their capital. Rotun Master talking about uh, Grom. New landmarks Fortress of Vorak, Tower of Bloody Toot, Darkhold, Graves of the Dragons, Kasabar, City of Bronze, 
Damn, Castle Bar got a landmark. Castle Bar is the is one of the uh, uh, Tomb King cities in the far south. It's one uh, just above the uh, the uh, the heart uh, the heart of the jungle where the Wood Elves are. Uh, the Shifting Sands, I think it's called the province. Wonder if this landmark will also be for the Tomb Kings. And more to find, so there's a lot more landmarks. All the exciting stuff. Uh, Order. New region in northern Voltage Mountains, uh, Karak Raziak. Kaz uh, Irkulas has moved to Peak Pass Province. We all mentioned this, as we've seen on the first uh, uh, stream of the reveal from CA. Two new regions added to Iveris, Shine of Loic and Tralinia. Now Iveris is a f on the second four uh, region province on Ultuan. Uh, Everest also has a powerful landmark for Dark Elves for the slavery, which makes it also one of the better uh, slave provinces uh, in the world. Gonna be great for uh, amazing actually for uh, uh, the uh, Blessed Red for uh, Lokir Felhart. Uh, new port region in Noble Country, Shattered Co. Noble Country is the starting province of Clan Ashen. It used to be a three slot, now it's a four slot. Dang, Clan Ashen looking good. Looking good. They added uh, finally a port on that close sea. Dragon Isles, Dreadrock, Shattered Stone Isles, and Dragon Fang Mount are now po all port settlements. So uh, the capital and the second region are now ports as well. Campaign balance changes high elves for techless. Plus five recruit rank now applies to Lord Master and Archmages. I wonder if that plus five recruit rank will apply to his starting mage. Or did they fix that already? I'll constantly be mixing this with another thing. There's so many things you know to keep track of, it's insane. The diplomatic relations bonus now also applies to Wood Elves, Lizardmen and Dwarves, the one he had. Uh, I think it was plus ten. Now receives minus 25% recruit cost for Phoenixes and the Sword Masters of Hort. Now receives minus 25% building cost for mage related buildings. Take list now start so with the Lord Master Hero in both Vortex and Mortal Empires. Take list now starts at war with Clan Faster in Mortal Empires campaigns. It's actually pretty good for the AI because uh, the AI take list uh, seemed like to be uh, wandering uh, aimlessly. Now he's actually going to have some goals to expand his province and build up further, be stronger. This is actually a nice buff for the AI Techless. And it looks like uh, the regular Techless also got quite a bit of buffs. Techless's manifold sorcery skill no longer faction wide. Archmages have their own flavor of cost reduction. So it's been a, been a nerf to uh, uh, Winds of Magic Power Reserve uh, the costs for spells for Techless as well, which was a little bit absurd, honestly. Stuff like this should be more for techless, definitely. So for uh, Alariel, uh, now receives a minus 25% cost reduction to intrigue at court actions in addition to previous effects. Alariel's power of nature bundle now grants one influence per turn for each region under its effects. Ooh, so you can get even more uh, uh, influence now. Alari uh, Alariel's rights have been revamped. Right of Liliad, uh, minus 30% cooldown for all spells, all armies. Enables ability channeling inspire all armies, uh, which regenerates with the magic power reserve, depending on how many characters are in the area where you cast it. Plus 50% magic item drop chains all armies. Damn, this Right of Liliad is good shit. It's actually really good stuff. A lot of people underestimate the, uh, the buff on the magic item drop chances. You know, on a ability like scouting on the mages, and then wonder how does Elich get all those talisman preservations? I mean, fuck it, I don't use scripts. Uh, it just it's just random, guys. Four thousand of hours. You guys remember every time we drop one talisman pre preservation, arm of destiny, and shit like that. You gotta add those uh, magic eye drop chance increases. Get the scouting immediately. Level five, level ten. No need for scripts. And then if you get it on turn 1, you just say, stream of luck. The next 10 campaigns, you're not going to get it on turn 1. In what, but, yeah, guys, remember to use LH Diplomacy mod and uh, better uh, item drop chains and script. It will change your campaigns. 
Invocation of Isha. Replaced by Great Invocation of Isha, uh, which uh, provides regeneration to all three spirit and units in addition to existing effects. Okay. I'm do loving uh, the actually uh, considering uh, changes to the faction effects of various factions. One day they will remember Archaon and the worst, the absolute worst trash shit steaming pile faction effects in the game and uh, he gonna get power faction effects as well. Uh, high elf influence rebalance. Uh, the secure influence Oh Agent action God. now provides influence per you turn for five turns rather than a single shit. lump sum. Who actually uh, like this? This is gonna. Uh, I mean, it's not really you know big change, but you know it's interesting. Get influence over time, so I guess uh, it's less abusable and you don't have to spam it as much. I like this change. Uh, thank you, Shins. Uh This is intended to make constant use of agent action less necessary for optimal influence generation, obviously. The embassy building now grants two influence per turn. Nice. Nice. The release captives bill oh bundle God. now provides plus one influence Have per turn from shit? armies Holy on which shit. it is active. Hell? Huh. Damn, get uh, more uh, ways to generate influence. Uh, I feel like they did this because uh, uh, people were pretty much using influence only for... Uh, uh, strong trade heroes and lords and haven't really been using influence in the court or events so it was all it, turn, it just turned into just making influence to get those uh, overpowered uh, lords and hero traits instead of actually using it for you know what was m intended more you know manipulating diplomacy and uh, some other minor stuff so by, by giving you uh, ways to get more influence from other uh, uh, sources they might actually consider Oh, I might actually use it for the court instead. Most 60 cost influence traits have been rebalanced. Certain stakeable campaign effects, notably uncertain entrepreneur, have their effects reduced. While others, particularly character and only battle effects, have been strengthened. Nice. So uh, you see, they're giving even further incentive to uh, consider uh, other stuff than just uh, stacking the, uh, the very strong stuff. Which a lot of people consider cheesing, but uh, anything uh, good and effective, you know. Uh, it's like, I'm not gonna take it just to guess it's 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 good. It's uh, one of the faction benefits. There's not not nothing cheesing about this. It's just you know poorly balanced. Of course, you're just gonna use always the better bonus. It's a strategy game. Snowball is always good instead of you know a variety in different options. Uh, the plus one influence per turn effect on the court of the Fingers King has been replaced by a 10% cost reduction of all three at court actions. So, the court of the Fingers King is a landmark in uh, uh, Lothurn. So, uh, okay, they kind of want to make uh, uh, high level diplomacy options through uh, in, uh, influence actions like uh, more incentivized and actually uh, option you actually were considering. Instead of, you know, complaining, you know, diplomacy don't work and you know, just get that I mean, let me just, you know, go to the, you know, to the to facts here. You recruit entrepreneur, you get increased to the faction by tax, you get more money. Money can be used for diplomacy. So what the fuck is the purpose of, uh, you know, using influence to affect diplomacy instead? The negative part of it uh, is extremely situational. And uh, you increases the chances. You never get a guarantee. You have a guarantee of getting gold. You can use that gold to manipulate diplomacy. Gifts. So instead of using influence to increase relations between you and other faction, you just give gifts instead. And if you don't need it, you just use gold for everything else. So this part of the mechanic, you know, it's it is kind of you know. Not put much, you know, thought into, you know. There should be events that actually... Hold on. I have 14 influence. And instead of trying to cause those two factions to dislike each other, let me just use that 14 influence to break a treaty between these two factions instead. And not try to influence some relationship which might never happen. Because it's just a chance, not a guaranteed thing. All of a sudden, the influence game... Uh, I'm gonna use diplomacy. 
I want to break lines between that and that faction. No, let me pay my 100 influence. Alliance broken. They get negative relations at the same time. All of a sudden, it's actually a mechanic that works. Instead of just being used for the lords and the heroes to uh, get better trades. But you know, this is all rocket science and we can't have nice stuff like that. So we're going to just have to pray. Uh, uh, it's going to be enough to lower increase relations instead. Generic characters now never uh, now never start a campaign with a negative influence trait. So this means the random trait uh, for your uh, random characters like the heroes, like the starting hero uh, for either techless or the uh, any starting hero, so these uh, factions they will not start with a negative uh, influence trait. So you have a better chance of getting the good stuff. These are all nice changes, really. This actually uh, makes the influence uh, make a little bit more sense. Uh, we have to see how it's in the game, how much influence you get overall. Was it a change nerve buff? But balance was definitely needed. Balance was definitely needed. The noble influence pain was definitely abusable. This uh, uh, not only makes the noble, you know, consider other actions, but also makes him, you know, active more to campaign him up for spine and just, you know, get influence every turn. Unit unlock changes. Spearmen and basic arts are now available from tier 1 of the main building chain. Lot and Sigurd and Shield are now additionally uh, uh, available from Tier 3 Elven Colony buildings and Tier 3 ports. Nice. Archer's Light Armor now available from the Tier 1 version of the Barracks was Tier 2. Shadow Warriors are uh, time reduced from 2 to 1. Holy shit! Somebody must have given a good input because I don't believe these changes coming from CA alone. Damn! This is some good stuff, guys. What the hell? Other. The Gallery White's uh, uh, Kekelfurt skill no longer replaces Bomb Throw. We can now have both. Minus with Blasting Charges now count as melee units instead of missile units for bonuses. Praise Jesus. Blood Voyage armies now receive Army White Frenzy. Well, it's like they're gonna have this is gonna help them in a, in a random, unpredictable 50 50 auto resolve. Unbreakable has to mean something in balance of power meter and auto resolve, and it doesn't. It really doesn't. So Harganet is kind of still gimped with that. If Harganet is an AI faction, only the Lord of the Blood Voyage army will be unbreakable, not the entire army. So <laughs> they even nerf it. They even nerf it instead of making it, keeping it you know, strong. Challenge stands, as well as the variants such as the Blessing Lilith, now require less movement to enter. Hallelujah! This is amazing change. The shit was uh, next to unusable with uh, how much they required before. They probably required 25% now instead of 50. It was really a shit stance. I guess uh, they start whoring, uh, uh, they figure out that nobody uses that shit. Instead of, on, uh, they probably just uh, uh, had it just used for to get trade instead of, in, instead of anything else. And the AI sometimes use it because, you know, the AI rolls, you know, a dice which tends to enter at the end of the turn. Uh, Ungrim no longer grants plus 30% casual punishment for slayers in his army. <laughs> this has been replaced by unique passive Journey's End, which prevents slayers from dying until they lose at least 50% of their HP. Damn! This is this is strong. Maybe even the Legend of Total War will stop talking shit about the slayers with Kar with Karakadun. This is really strong. So, there are 80 slayers in the unit. They have elite stats, but they have no armor. So, they are super offense, uh, low defense, uh, armor especially, so weak to range. Now, they will not be dying unless they drop below 50% HP, which in ultra scale is uh, still over 4000 health. That is huge. Make Karakadin a lot more fun. And their uh, main province is also now 3 slot. Hey, Brace, I hope you're uh, seeing this. Karakadrin is... Looks like more fun than ever. We're gonna have to do a Karakadrin campaign feature again. Uh, tier 3 Tomb King uh, uh, Barracks now grant additional plus 2 unit capacity for Nekaran Warriors. Ooh, nice, nice. A lot of more Nekaran Warriors, so you don't have to just spam a lot of the Skeleton Spearmen and Skeleton Warriors. What the hell are these changes? Who gave them this input? There's some really good shit. 
This is some really good shit, guys. Ravenous expansion skill for Skaven reduce faction wide settlement income from uh, 20 and 4% to 2 and 4%. Uh, so it's not abusable uh, 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 like crazy uh, in the Lord pool. So this is uh, this is guys. Uh, you, you can actually read uh, this like this. You know we know that uh, the lords that are in the pool, not having currently a command of an army on the campaign map, provide faction wide bonuses. We know this, and uh, we keep an eye on this, and we you know balance it. This is intended. This is intended. People uh, would uh, recruit a bunch of uh, Skaven Warlords just for this buff and never use Skaven Warlords. Because it's the worst Skaven Lord. Absolute trash tier. The other ones are just much better. Battle balance changes. Contact effects and friendly fire. Stop me if you heard this one before. You have uh, recruited a fresh faced group of chameleon skinks to support your Sauros push. The lines clash and the skinks start walling the enemy. Then you realize you poison your own troops again. Well, I guess they, keep, they forget to put the skinks behind. They do it from behind. Poison and the other contact effects on ranged weapons have long been a double edged sword. Friendly fire meant you could poison your own troops just as readily as the enemies, leaving you with a zero. Some result. With this upgrade, friendly fire will still cause damage, but will uh, never inflict debilitating countering effects on your own troop units. This also applies to vortices, bombardments, and other sources of friendly fire debilitation, all except the poison wind because Skaven. I mean, uh, shit wizard, I'm sure they think about the blessed units. It definitely mean about the blessed units, because who the fuck recruits kings, skirmishers, on the or the chameleon kings? So, uh, your range units, which uh, was one of the reasons why a lot of people would just drop Night Goblin Archers, because they would just be poisoning your Black Orcs. So your Black Orcs would use 20% damage, and the enemy used 20% damage, so what the fuck is the point? Of course, you get a stock, uh, you get uh, Vanga deployment, but, you know, what was the point using over the goblin, regular Goblin Archer? So, uh, no more poisoning your Black Orcs with your uh, Night Goblin Archers. Strider rework. Strider has long been an estranged attribute, providing niche benefits that were hard to take advantage of because nobody knows if they actually worked. Uh, we significantly expand its behavior with this rework. Old Strider, this unit ignores forest penalties if it's large and war penalties if it's small, which nobody knows if it even worked. It worked only in our heads, boys. New Strider. Uh, the unit ignores terrain inflicted stat penalties, same as the old behavior. Units aren't slowed down by hills and other slopes. Uh, units don't take a penalty for fighting uphill. Units don't tire quicker than uh, when moving up slopes. Units can pass through trees. Damn, this is actually an ability that's actually now good. Good. Good shit. Good shit. This is going to be a, a kind of indirect buff to the, uh, the spider riders. I just hope they didn't remove the technology to give them massive attack. Because, you know, then, like, it's still useless. Uh, Wootsman uh, Attribute. The Wootsman Attribute is an offshoot of this Strider Attribute that grants only the ability to pass through trees. This Attribute uh, is available to all ground units belonging to the Wood Elves and Beastmen, as well as these additional units. White Lions of Kreis, Alistair the White Lion on foot, Marcus Wolfhart, Huntsman General, Huntsman... Ember Wizard on Foot Warhorse and Bard Warhorse, not on the uh, on the Grifo now. Strider units now feel more snappy and uh, responsive, being able to rocket up the hills that dot almost all maps without losing pace while uh, passing through trees allows them unparalleled mobility within densely forested areas. I wonder if any of the chariots get Strider. Or the, or the Woodsman, because they'll be actually awesome. What do we have here? As a part of uh, reworking Strider... Ooh, this actually... Uh, I think the Hex Freights actually had it uh, before. 
As a part of reworking Strider, we also reevaluated where it is available. It is now granted by certain ancillaries, and the following units now gain Strider. Ancillaries, they mean uh, uh, ancillaries are term in total war for uh, uh, for traits, uh, followers, traits and followers. Dire wolves, most of savage skin wolves armored. The dire pack dire wolves, Norse ice wolves, skin wolves. Armor Skin Wolves, Chaos Warhounds, Poison Version, Norse Warhounds, Poison Version, Beast of Tashna, the Norse Warhounds, Regiment of Renown, the Claw, Claw on Agash, the Morris Engine, Morris Engine, Death Runners, Asian Triads, Asian Assassins, Master Assassins, Death Master Snitch, and Asian Sorcerer. Wally Burst, Fire Weapon Ammunition Consumption Rework. Previously, if a unit was uh, interu interrupted during a volley or burst fire attack, they would lose any remaining ammunition in that volley or burst. This was especially punishing for units like warfire throwers and rattling guns. These units will not correctly retain ammunition if they didn't fire uh, when they were interrupted. So they don't lose out on any damage potential. Honestly, guys, I never even really noticed this. I never even really noticed this. Let's see if any of these units has been actually penalized by this. This change affects the following units. Uh, Red Crest is King Chief, the Thunder Swan and Jostegadon, Rattling Guns, Teeth Breakers, Selling Guns, Dead Dealer, Selling Guns, the Noble Sons of Broad Pistoliers. Huh. The Pistoliers were actually losing ammo. That made sense because you know, they were actually sometimes losing ammo faster and they were doing no damage. It's actually pretty good for the uh, Pistoliers. The Black Lion's War Wagon, uh, it's the Hellblaster War Wagon, the Razzon Hunting Pack. A Max and Barbs, the Regiment Renown, the Summon One, Master Assassin, Tyrannoc Chariot, Skin Chief, Skin Priests, Inch Stegen on the Sunmaker, Hellsum Rocket Battery, Sky Hammer, Gyro Bomber, Organ Guns, Gyro Bomber, Hellbuster, Volley Gun, Hellsum Rocket Battery, Pistoliers, Gallows, Giant, Neckfest, Colossus, Eat Claw, Umbrins, Warfare Trowers, Warfare Trowers, Iron Drinks. I mean, uh, other than Pistoliers, this isn't you know, is not much noticeable. I mean, uh, this could be just, you know, uh, the pistols might be actually be better now because of this. Splash damage calculation fixes. We have addressed two important bugs with our splash damage system relating to how damage is calculated. The first bug was that during a single attack animation, if there were multiple splash attack zones, an entity could be damaged twice. Ooh, this is nerfed dragons. We got seen this recently. You guys uh, remember when the dragon lands hit bam two dam two types damage bam bam this is actually a big nerf to some units uh, dragons especially uh, if there are multiple splash attack zones an entity could be damaged twice this was an un uh, unintentional and a single entity should only be able to take damage once from a single attack animation Ooh, that's actually a big nerf to the dragon the dragon dropping from the air was causing massive damage remember trash yeah I, I, I can't forget that this uh, has now been fixed and entities that are damaged during attack animation are immune to any uh, other damage from the same attack. So there was a bug, you know, there definitely uh, is a nerf, but uh, we didn't know there was a bug. We, you know, bugs in these games are sometimes features that are yet to be explained, you know, or recognized as bugs. Uh, the second bug was uh, the, the attack animations in multiple special attack zones would do multiplicative damage in correlation with the number of special zones. So a unit which deals 100 damage uh, but has two special zones could deal up to 200 damage, 100 for each zone. This has not been altered in order to mitigate the extra damage provided by from additional special zones. Each subsequent special zone now has a diminishing returns by dealing less damage than the previous one, but only if the previous zones didn't on the damage on anti holy shit it looks like the uh, the uh, splashing uh, had actually ner uh, been nerfed so this would uh, were not supposed to be working like that so looks like they nerfed uh, the special talks so these things have been bugged all this time damn makes you wonder what we're gonna discover next Bug fix in the campaign. Fixed multiple end turn crashes. Fix the crash when loading particular save games when playing as mouse. Fixed a soft lock that could occur when pressing escape with a dilemma option open. 
Fix the crash that occurred uh, when rapidly mousing between Zarkon, Whisper and normal mission elements. Uh, loading time for the Empire minus element crossroads map significantly improved. Middle Forest uh, uh, reconstructed uh, now consists of three thin strips. Sigma statue and cliff sizes drastically reduced. So it's that uh, battlefield which was totally uh, overused in the campaign map it been changed. Uh, improved load times and performance of the Lord Crow quest battle, Lord Crow temple, subterranean custom battle, smooth semi transition to gameplay in the quest battle. Upkeep penalty is now updated correctly when disbanding the first recruited army. I guess uh, we don't have to update it with the treasury or this is kind of bug related. Damn. It sounds to me like upkeep bug was not even fixed in the first place. So we might have been playing still with the upkeep bug thinking they, they patched this. What the fuck? <laughs> Looks like somebody did him a cake as well. I guess this one deserves two. This was the two. It's like one of the things been fixed, but uh, was it really actually fixed? Like the same like the artillery changes. <laughs> <laughs> With green skin rework, what is the worst faction in the game to replace Scarcely? Well, uh, with green skins being reworked, the worst faction in the game is no doubt Warriors of Chaos. The Warriors of Chaos is by far the worst faction in the game. The beasts are not that far off. After that is probably, uh, I would say probably uh, Wintertooth and the other Horde faction, the Spirit of the Jungle. Okay. Uh, fix several characters and units missing attrition immunities. Oh, finally. Okay. Diplomacy with all faction now actually includes all faction. No shit, it worked in my head only, huh? Uh, fix several instances of missions not accepting regiments or non equipment variant uh, units for completion. Uh, all settlements in the Vortex campaign should properly grant ritual. Who oh, cares about Vortex campaign? Teleport to Quest Battle can now uh, uh, correctly be used from the events panel. Uh, fixed an issue with the event feed display for battles uh, results which included a uh, faction that has been conferred after that bell. Oh. Fixed an issue uh, with list in the, in the dation in the recruitment panel. Fixed an issue where some Lord recruitment rank bonuses weren't applying when replacing Legend Lords. Hallelujah. Fixed uh, several instances of buildings uh, granting extra benefits when damaged. Finally, wonder if they fixed the bug with the uh, horde buildings granting uh, recruit experience, which was counted double for the horde factions. Uh, red top post. What is the red top post? Eltarion, uh, Warriors of Chaos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Warriors of Chaos. One, two, three. And a war chaos is a DLC you had to buy as well. How much do they cost these days? Well, it's probably the worst DLC because, uh, you know, we pre purchase with the game. And uh, if you don't, it's a DLC. Warriors of Chaos. Let's see. Warriors of Chaos 799. How much is the uh, Grom? Uh. It's almost, almost the same, one euro more, so it's one euro difference. And this faction has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and worst case, have one, two, three buttons on. Huh? Okay. It's definitely this, that was it. <laughs> definitely the worst faction in the game. We uh, destroyed the world with Warriors of Chaos uh, uh, this year, and uh, they could use this, uh, this, you know, this thing to 
literally um, torture people. Torture people. Running around Empire and uh, vacuum-mauling the settlements. It's a little torture. Ah, uh, there's another kick we queued. Okay. <laughs> exactly, exactly. People were actually donating to extend the campaign, so we, uh, I was getting paid per turn to play that campaign. Uh, fix several instances of buildings granting extra benefits when damaged. Huh? Fixed several instances of buildings granting extra benefits when damaged. I've never even noticed these instances. Uh, the fast forward and turn button will now remember its setting. Okay, that's good. Uh, Card ring and button will now correctly open skill tabs and character details panel. Rights can no longer be performed while characters are moving. Fixed an issue that allowed the AI uh, to keep attempting vortex. The cunning trade now also grants the, its ambush success uh, bonus in enemy territories. Oh, nice. This is actually. Ooh, this is good shit. I mean, sneaky is sneaky, but, you know, cunning, you know, it's like, you know, sneaky. Uh, Cheaper version of sneaky, I uh, like lighter version. Cunning for the skin should be something else because sneaky exists, so it's kind of redundant. Uh, remove the requirement for affection uh, to not uh, be allowed to capture territory and yet be far from capital to allow the lazy and far from home traits to be unlockable. Remove the requirement for affection to not be allowed to capture territory and yet be far from capital to allow the lazy and far from home traits to be unlockable. Requirement was to not be allowed to capture territory. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is Procrastinator and the Lone Wolf. So Lone Wolf uh, a procrastinator was uh, if you are in a settlement with a public co with a high public order and doing nothing, so you would get a negative uh, uh, campaign movement com uh, movement range on the campaign. While Far From Home is the uh, the Lone Wolf one. Uh, the more turns you spend in enemy territory, uh, you get points towards this, which would increase uh, campaign movement range. Up to 10% and Strider on rank on the third both, but uh, uh, it would actually reset every time you would capture settlement. So just uh, what does this mean? Let's say uh, you're playing as Cal France and you're in enemy territory with Cal France. Let's say you're at war with uh, Midland. You are just above Aldorf, and you would need to spend consecutive turns in the territory to actually gain this uh, buff. But you, if you just enter the territory and immediately capture the settlement next turn, it would reset every time. Lone Wolf always had an extreme uh, condition to unlock. At least I think this is the Lone Wolf. So you would actually uh, be able to unlock Wolf uh, as you spend uh, uh, turns in enemy territory and it doesn't reset when you capture settlements. Because it, w it was extreme how it was unlockable and uh, usually it's unlockable by uh, repeatedly raiding. And the way this state actually is discovered is, uh, you know, by uh, confederating AI lords and see they have this trait and you're wondering, this shit exist? And then you remember the AI is known for, you know, raiding for uh, a crazy amount of turns in the first place. Uh, this could also be uh, for Crusader as well, which grants perfect vigor. So lazy is procrastinator and uh, could be procrastinator and uh, lone wolf. Well, far from home could be the uh, the crusader one or the uh, uh, the uh, the one for perfect trigger campaigner. 
this were bugged for a for a while now, really a while now, and looks like they might have fixed them now. Sort of K now displays the correct values for his diplomatic penalties in all situations. The lemmas will now update correctly when influence changes uh, as they are triggered. The high elf ancillary advice to the, to the king can now be correctly assigned to any high elf lord. Uh, I think uh, this was, was allowed only on a legend lord before. Intrigue at court uh, drops downs so will no longer have text extending outside of them. Invocation of Hoyt now correctly applies its experience effects to mages with the lores of shadows and heavens. So it didn't work on those two. Out of the Nara's hand of uh, the Shadow Crown, a uh, hero can now uh, search ruins and now correctly shows that the, uh, he increases the discoverability of local undercities. Okay. Lore Masters of Hoyt can now equip arcane items. Damn, son, that's huge! Wonder if uh, the Skaven Warlock uh, engineers can also do it. This is this is big. Now you definitely want one in every army. They didn't have the Arcan item slot and be classified as wizard, although they are uh, you know a hybrid uh, hero. Greenskins can no longer build two versions of the Beast Lairs building in major settlements with the passion resource. Well, no shit, they finally fixed that bug. It's actually just showing there are two, but you can only build one. I don't know if you can actually build two. Maybe you could have built two, actually. I never tried. Those buildings were so shit, I never built them. Uh, Dark Elf version of the Tower of Hoyt Lenman now allows the group to Medusa and it adds the sources to the garrison. I guess they forgot when they introduced these units. Uh, the Skaven Bryson Mine Landmark and Mount Goomba can uh, now also apply its benefits to Doom Flares. Black Arc Armless can now gain traits and the Sword of Cain. Black Arc Armless didn't get. We're not getting traits? I didn't even notice! Damn shit! You can't even notice this shit until you read it out loud. Okay, this is actually uh, another big buff to Loki Felhard. This is the second big buff to Loki Felhard. Man, Loki Felhard actually uh, from a tryhard faction into a, a becoming a strong faction. If he actually gets a black arc ship building for himself personally while he is, uh, you know, if he actually gets the Blessed Red, actually become a quite a powerful faction. Greenskin Big Bully Trade now correctly applies its effects when on a hero. They must have watched my video, guys, because, you know, I bitched about this for a while. Uh, the landmark port on Dragon Isles no longer provides available resources for Greenskins since they don't trade or extra money for Tomb Kings. Greenskins don't trade, huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? What's what's this? Okay, God, let me find the screenshot within five minutes. I don't think spend a lot of time. Uh, that one. There you go, boys. There's a bug that can actually, uh, this can actually happen. I don't know how to reproduce it, but it can happen. Green skin tribes. This is what is in Warhammer 1. I guess it might have been patched since then. Toe Game has a question. Your Elegy does Dreading current minus Elegy on uh, Dreading is on your stack? Of course. Of course, this thing stack. Okay, found it. Battle side markets should now correctly increase the raise dead pool size. Okay, we'll see about that. Vampire Counts can no longer raise dead at sea immediately after attacking and occupying a coastal settlement. No longer immediately, huh? Fix several Vampire Coasts, unique settlements missing advanced vault tower projectiles. Hallelujah. Blooded Corpse now has terror to match their bullet point. Okay. So, 
You're telling me the, the Blood Corps can actually hit, bam, and terrify at the same time? Vapor cause recruit rank effects no long, uh, now longer reference unit experience instead of recruit rank. No longer, now longer, I guess a typo. Luther Harkon's leadership bonus version, uh, version, Luther Harkon leadership bonus ver Is this English? Luther Harkon's leadership bonus version Lizardman is now correctly, I guess versus, I guess mean versus Lizardman. Luther Harkon leadership bonus versus Lizardman is now correctly uh, display in the Lord effects category and affection effects screen. It's version, versus. I'm getting confused guys, you know. I'm, mean, you know, creation first and then, uh, you know, and uh, my English is second language. Heroes can no longer gain a sea leg straight, which provided them no benefit. Okay, this is definitely a bug, because the movement uh, bonuses uh, don't work on heroes. And also Lord Army only. There can be only one Chief Doomclaw. So uh, the rebels will no longer get Chief Doomclaw. I wonder if they fix this for the uh, the King Loon. King Loon was also, you know, part of rebels and other factions, generic names. Maybe they forgot about that one. The Skaven skills dictatorial and corruptive now uh, correctly lock each other out for the Shadow and Blade characters. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's a uh, uh, campaign skill. I think one was untainted and one was the uh, scheme of corruption that they actually don't work together so you can actually pick one. Snitch will now automatically equip the world of whipping blades on uh, mission completion. What? He didn't equip that before? I guess you had to put yourself or the uh they mean the AI here. It's hard to say. We did play one short campaign with uh with Snitch. Uh, Warlock engineers should no longer be able to uh, equip Doomwheel assembly module as this was never intended. One of the one of the items from the uh, workshop. Uh, Black hole flares uh, now have access to the brass orb ability campaign. Under impact, the discoverability tooltip will no longer stick around when rapidly mousing on and off the discoverability bar. I think we actually had this bug. Clan Asian buildings in El Calabar will no longer be overwritten by Empire buildings when playing a stick tac toe. What? Clan Asian's buildings in El Calabar will no longer be overwritten by Empire buildings when playing a stick toe. This is hell of a confusion. I don't understand what this means. Let's move on. Adjusted short campaign victory objectives for Clan Ashen. Ooh, looking forward to see that one. Other Skaven uh, no longer uh, still take unique landmark at uh, 8 peaks from Clan Moors. So, does this mean uh, if you have a Clan Ashen take 8 peaks, you no longer get a unique scan building? So, it's just, just for Clan Moors, not other clans. When mousing over the contract available icon in the Shadow Dealings hot bar, the clan reputation tooltip will no longer appear. Clan connect button for clan will now close the panel if it's already open. Man, uh, stuff like this is some developers, you know, just release as a hotfix next week, not five months later. This has been released like 10th of December 2019, and now in its 19, uh, 19 May 2020. Damn. Damn, man, it's like, this reminds me of the uh, release of the Bannerlord, which I didn't even play, but I've been hearing tales they were actually patching the games once a day, some days even twice. Damn. During Corona crisis, during the, like, during the, the worst of the Corona crisis, putting all those developers to shame. UI will no longer snap back to, uh, to the top after slowing down and upgrading a unit it gets close from the workshop. Uh, Scrolls uh, Liber Bonicus now correctly reduces the cost of Clan Pestilence version of the Pestilence scheme. Uh, they actually changed this, so I guess uh, they forgot to, uh, you know, put it on the item. Skaven Warp Grinders no longer count as missile infantry. 
Fixed issue where Skaven factions confederating with each other couldn't remove other cities from settlements which they have newly acquired. Fix an issue where unclickable manting appeared in settlements after Doom Sphere detonation. This is the reason why I uh, quit my uh, last clan uh, Scryer campaign when we were doing uh, Undercity Simulator. Now that this has been fixed, RuneScape, if you are hearing this, you can request Clan Scryer campaign. And we will be back sooner or later to the Undercity uh, Simulator campaign where we just build under cities and mind our own business and don't give a shit about what is happening in the world until we blow up everything. Uh, Rand Crescent's King Chips no longer lose all their attrition immunities when mounted on an ancient stegadon. Mm -hmm. The enforcement events for, for the Empire will no longer incur a trespassing penalty. Five months, man. Five months for this. If only, you know, uh, they fixed that during the early access last time. Instead of, you know, uh, Amber Wizard now uses G Green Griffin Mount in board campaign and custom bells. Uh, Wolf Hearts Hunters no longer have a chance to have their unique traits replaced by vanilla ones. We will no longer be playing... Uh, Heimskar uh, preaching unless we have a white run settlement on the map. The Hans Marshall's expedition will now start with Wolfhard's hunters when an AI as an AI faction. Walkman no longer has a hidden 75% discount on electro count electro units. Huh? Walkman no longer. Volkman no longer has a hidden 75% discount on Lector Counts. I guess nobody starts with Volkman so nobody really knew about this bug. No, who the fuck starts with Volkman? Fixed an issue preventing the Red Duke. <laughs> Volkman should have his own faction. Nobody gonna start with that shit. Am I right? <laughs> Uh, fix the Vampire Hero Trade Master of the Black Arts, not Grinding Spirit Lich is sated. Uh, vampire Lord of Shadows Castle now gain bonuses for Corruption Effects Leadership. Holy shit, man. Didn't they fix that bug in the past? This is like a bug from 2018. Because they didn't count as undead. What the hell? Have they fixed this in the past? Black knights with lances and barring now properly display armor and shield instead just armor in their uh, bullet points. Norse and Carlos will now use their updated Warhammer 2 character traits. Man, it's 2020 and they're still patching Norska from Warhammer 1. Uh, fix an issue causing many effects that started uh, a voice of chaos to also affect uh, Norse confections. Uh, the trade maimed arm now provides its defense benefit for heroes as well, instead of just providing a flat penalty. Hellebron's Palace no longer grants minus one recruitment duration for which else? Beastmaster Skill Sorcerers of Grand now applies its recruitment time reduction to Blood Wreck Shrines. Beast Slaver and Whiplash are now swapped on the Beastmaster Skill Tree. Unique items in the Mortuary Cult panel no longer state that they are repeatable. Arkan the Black Shrine Tomb Blade of Arkan Quest Bell now has Arkan the Black as the Lord leading the bell. Fixed uh, the regiment of renowned variants of Hekaran warriors, uh, Nekara horsemen and Necropolis knights not gaining the bonus of the plot of their base unit. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The Bretonian technologies that affect Norska should now function properly, correctly. Because the Nehekaran uh, warriors regiment now is pretty badass unit. Not just cool. And it was triggering not to have those bonuses working properly. 
But what does this mean? Bretonian technologies that affect Norska should now function correctly. Should? Is this should like... What, shouldn't it be the Bretonian technologies that, uh, that affect Norska now function correctly? Didn't test this shit? No, does they, they don't even test shit. Did they say, just say should? Man, this, what the hell? Uh, Greater leak no longer counts as war machines. Awakening of the wood uh, skill now has a spell ability on its tooltip. So no. Armies can no longer clip in the mountains on the Dread Rock Island. Elector counts tooltip will no longer cut off in multiple languages. Uh, battle, battle part of the of the page notes. Fix an issue that could cause abilities to persist indefinitely if they grant the healing and a unit hit their maximum healing capacity while they were ongoing. What the shit? Did they fix this before? The Mortis Engine, Lifeblood Bug. Vortex spells damage calculation no longer uses missile damage uh, defense on the target. Fix an issue with army spell targeting for Vortex when the unit target is over buildings. I'm confused. Projectiles should no longer fall short of their target when shooting from extreme ranges. <coughs> Fix an issue where units uh, would not fire on targets when shooting from extreme ranges. Maybe this will actually fix uh, several of those issues. Fix some instances where projectiles and firing arcs did not match. Ammo counts will now take into account burst size. Artillery engine based missile damage is now being modified correctly. Is this, uh, uh, they pretty much are saying here, uh, all the missile damage buffs for the artillery never really buffed uh, uh, the explosion damage correctly, so now we are fixing it in the four years. We are sorry we, you know, had this screw up going on for all this time. Uh, decoy units will now use their parents' leadership value for their leadership bar. Like the uh, Alitanar. Uh, fixed instance where Dark Elves ability guardian could stack. It's the physical resistance uh, usually from a, from a hero. Uh, Dorgit Squeaks, Night Goblin Squeak Hoppers no longer count as melee infantry. What? They've never counted as a cavalry unit before? It worked in my head. Ripan's Hollow Metal in Red is now classified as an explosion rather than an augment. Handling a Massif, uh, Hippogriff is no longer missing in siege attack rate. The virtue of duty now works when applied uh, by a hero character. Fixed an attack animation on mouse. What the fuck is this? Are they are we reading battle changes or bug fixes? Are, are, this is bug fix for battles. Ah, right, right, right. I'm um, my bad. I thought we were in a stage where we should be reading a uh, plus one for creep horrors. There's still bug fixes here. Fixed an attack animation uh, on mouse that causes him to slide after performing the attack. Uh, fix an issue where deck dropper guns didn't appear to be holding pistols when idle. Fixed an issue where a variety of mounted units were not producing blood effects when hit. Depth guard will no longer dismember. Maybe if we actually find a fix, uh, they, they fix the crushes uh, for the healing. Malus's transition into Zarkon is now visually smoother. Fiery Convocation's Phoenix model no longer vanishes when zoomed out. Yeah, that was actually an issue, I remember that. The interesting marks for Hand of God, something, and the Dragon Armor of an Iron Quest battles will no longer incorrectly show blood and gore stumps. Fixed an issue when Norsk and Marauders with great weapons weren't animating correctly when uh, fighting as a part of a rogue army. Uh, fixed an issue where the training level of all units in the game 
We figured out that there was uh, some undesirable behavior that was occurring as a result of the training level of units in the database being set to various different values. All units have been set to the same value so that no longer subtly alters unit behavior behind the scenes. The ability spinning loons uh, is no longer visible for enemy oh players, which means that Did it's a lot trickier to find out uh, whether a unit of night globons contains fanatics. Uh, this realizes the original design's intention of the unit. I guess for multiplayer. Hey, Scotty. Thank you for the new support. High Elf Dragon Mounts, uh, Lutheran Sea Guard, and Phoenix Guard units now have faction colors. Okay. Emperor Archers and the Dead Jacks now have different textures to distinguish them from one other. Fix a few instances of selection banners clipping into units. Fix an issue where High Elf Mages riding Edelmar Chariots were incorrectly scaled. Have you noticed that? Uh, unit balancing. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Uh, bug fixes. Fix several instances of, of regiment renown being subtly different from their base unit at rank 9. Okay, that's actually over many cases of that. Uh, the Rusty Arrest, Nagomon Archers, morale from 45 to 50, so they have more morale. Soul Crush, War Mammoth, base little time reduction from 10 to 30. Skyhammer, Jar Bomber, base uh, reload time reduction from 20 to 30. The Shredder of Lost, the Red Sorian, base reload time reduction from 10 to 30. Looks like they changed the base uh, reload uh, time reduction on a lot of these units, 10 to 30. Uh, from the regiments of renown. So they basically had the wrong values. Uh, this doesn't mention the the Dwarf Warriors regiment of renown, which has less AP than their uh, original version. I guess they have flaming attack, so it's more probably, uh, you know, working as intended. Okay, they basically just fixed a bunch of uh, uh, these issues on rank 9 for the uh, for the stat changes. Because uh, the Regents of Renown started rank 9, and uh, some of the bonuses didn't uh, been adjusted or when they changed some of the bonuses uh, that grant, grant by the experience over time with the, uh, with the updates on the game. Unit name adjustments, let's see. Uh, the names of all chariot uh, units have been pluralized to better reflect the fact that chariot units are comp compromised to more than one chariot on most unit sizes. Chaos Knight Lances found in uh, found his mates and now and it's now Chaos Knights. What about larger horses? This is more important than making the, the dumb ponies into proper horses. Visual improvements. The coming of Grom has prompted Alistair the White Lion to wield a flashy new axe that he actually had the entire time, but simply didn't tell anyone about. Beastmen. They made the Resogod chariots cheaper. Now have a slightly different unit category icon. Resogod herd uh, more expensive. Minotaur shields decreased uh, melee defense from 46 to 45. What the shit? Like, what the fuck will they do? One more, one less melee defense? Man, I'm glad they're running simulations, you know, to, to change these things. Decrease my... What the... What what, what, what? Here we go, boys. Nothing has changed. What is this? What is this? Starcraft 2? Esports shit? Royal Hibergriff Knights now have their... <laughs> Did we have forgot to update this to 7? I think I forgot to update it last time. Equesting Knights increase male defense from 37 to 38. Questing Knights got one more melee defense. Pegasus Knights have two more attack and more anti larger. That's actually nice. This this is how this how it should be done. Two, at least two on two different things. Plus two attack for the Pegasus Knights and plus two anti larger Pegasus Knights. This is actually nice. Good change. Uh, Scourge Runner uh, and Cold One Chariots can no longer hide in forests. 
uh, ravages of rockets could change your radio load reduction reduce from 3 to 10. Goddamn multiplayer arm. Added uh, uh, both units to the units with 360 degree fire are cap. Systems of slaughters have been nerfed. Mel defense from 59 to 57. So two less mel defense for the systems of slaughter. Oh, this actually uh, is a is a is a big change. Almost almost a five percent change, right? Costs, goddamn costs. Bloodwork Medusa has more attack, four more attack. Uh, the sign of the Red Ruin, Bloodwork Medusa, increases melee attack from 38 to 340. That's actually a big change for the Medusa. It definitely was lacking attack. Malekit on uh, his Black Dragon has 5% less physical resistance. Thanks, multiplayer. Ooh, Karibdis got more health. 1000 more health. Damn, this is good now. Karibdis got a buff. This is good stuff. 1000 more health than Karibdis. Don't even care if they don't have they don't have the region. One second. A bunch of these cost changes, who cares about cost changes? Which else on Cardinal Blood and Blood Break Shrine? Uh Radis can now Use corrected weapon profile so their daggers no longer deal the same damage as the vehicle does when ramming into enemies. Guess it was a little bit busted, huh? Rangers with great weapons have 50% uh, more ammo. It's actually a big deal. Gyro Bomber. Uh, added contact uh, effects suppressed projectiles. Increase missile projectile explosion radius from 1 to 2 meters. Well, they doubled it. It's like I, I lost count how many times they buffed Gyro Bomber. Maybe they're actually gonna do something now. Save for the regional renown. Uh, Empire Griffins uh, attack metadata rework to make Griffins more effective against large groups of enemies. Hmm. Maybe you had the way they uh, do their attack animations. Uh, no category gained innate ability blood roar. So Boris Bo bringer on uh, Imperial Grief and Blood Roar is basically another fear uh, ability. Rise Guard increased melee defense from 28 to 29. Uh, War Vegans. <laughs> Somebody has seen the Legend of Total War video. Increase base missile damage from 3 to 5. Increase AP missile damage from 15 to 25. Now that's a change. Now that's a buff. With all that armor. Damn. So they don't have the same copy pasta outrider range. Instead they have proper range. Actually, uh, this is uh, this is almost double damage. A lot of those shots are still overkill because they target the same entity. So mortars as well. The lunar hitch got a little oh bit more God. durable in melee. Have you seen that shit? Thanks, Tom. What the hell? Okay, uh, what do we have here? Green skins. All lord characters have 100 percent old per stuff. Uh, colors overridden. Uh, now has one deployment. What? What the fuck is this shit? Grimgor has Vanguard and Skarsen is bigger? Can they do anything right? What was it? Was it? Wasn't the Skarsing supposed to get Vanguard and Gringo supposed to be bigger?
What? Uh, can it be red? Okay. My bad then. I'm still I'm still gonna have to a little bit figure it out. I still don't see it guys. You throwing me? So this is the part of this and this is the part of this. Okay, saved. Okay. Okay. Fail fish. Fail fish. Okay. Saved. Saved. Three head LH. That one that one was for me. So Scarcing now has also more speed uh, and base mill damage increased by 5, armor piece damage increased by 25. So Scarcing is fast and has more damage now uh, as well. Azak has uh, more mill defense on Skull Muncher, it's actually a big deal. Because those, uh, those Wyverns are complete trash because of shit melee defense. This is, this is huge. Total shit uh, uh, otherwise. Really bad melee defense. So what do we have? Arachnorok Spiders, uh, they lower the armor by, from 150 to 120, but they increase the health by uh, 1000. They also have 4 more melee attack. I guess uh, lowering armor by 30 and it's a massive amount in the first place, but increasing health and attack is actually a big deal. And getting more attack on the spider is huge. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually quite a big buff for the spiders. The armor was already really high. Yeah, this is, this is pretty good. Pretty good. The spiders uh, got way more offense. Bunch of costs here. Night Goblins Quick Hoppers increase melee attack from 23 to 25. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, they do rely on their uh, anti infantry as well. Good stuff. Very good stuff. This means they might actually get more melee attack from veterancy, which makes them deadlier. It's the only really good uh, cavalry the Greenskins have. Unless you're playing Wurzak, then the, uh, uh, the Savage Pigs uh, actually. Uh, you know, are overall better. But this is the only good cavalry the Greenskins have. Bunch of costs. Orc Boar Boys increase armor from 35 to 65, so uh, their heavy cavalry got a little bit better. It's the worst heavy cavalry in the game, man. They're worse than having uh, the Emperor Knights. Even the, uh, the Savage ones have more armor. This is the, the good one, the rest is just shit. 25 to 35 more armor, nice. Their uh, attack and defense values are so bad that uh, it's kind of irrelevant. But uh, for Wurzak, this is a very strong unit. The Broken Task Mob, the Regiment Renown, has also more armor now. Uh, High Elves, Chariot Model, and Metadata Fixes. Uh, uh, we have made adjustment to the metadata over the following units because it was observed that they were overperforming combat. Yeah, they were definitely the, the those chariots are pretty strong. We discovered that the metadata zones that dictate the area where the unit can logically attack and hit targets in melee were scaled and positioned incorrectly. These issues have been fixed so that the logical attack areas, splash attack zones of these units are much more in line with the visual attack animations performed in melee combat. Also in battle, these units now use a new variation of the chariot model uh, in that it has a bender move over to the side in order to prevent the mounted characters from clipping into it. So it looks like big nerf to the Ithuma chariot. 
Orbis Chariot, confirm best chariot uh, unit in the game. Yeah, my chariots uh, were, uh, were really strong at killing stuff. High Elf Mages, new lores of magic. Added new spell lores options for High Elf Mages, Beasts, Dead, Fire and Mel. The Fire Mage has a Sun Dragon mount which no other mages get. Yeah, just let, let's give a hero as a, a dragon, you know, what can be, what can go wrong? Meanwhile, uh, Night Goblin Shaman is, you know, Kekwi material. New mounts. Added a White Lion Chariot mount for Alistair the White Lion. Added an Arcan Phoenix mount for Teclis. Teclis is getting a flying mount. Damn. Teclis flying. What the shit? Those, uh, uh, those Phoenixes have massive health, don't like those shit Manticores. They have like 7000 health. Jesus. And he has his potion for uh, crazy toughness and healing. What the fuck? Other Griffin Mount uh, for both the Prince and the Princess. Griffin Mount for the Prince and Princess. Don't have dragons, Star Dragon. What the shit? Princess, uh, princesses and Alistair White Lion no longer gain martial prowess when mounted on a great eagle. Princesses and handmaidens can now fire on, a, uh, on the move in a 360 degree arc when on foot. Tyrion got martial masters and martial prowess. Hell yeah, brother! Tyrion get uh, uh, more attack. More attack. He didn't have enough attack, boys. Now we see who, who, who's this. Every single time, Queen the Crone, Queen gets all the shit. Warren and the Pounch, Warren the stuff gets all the shit. White Lions of Grace. Increase HP per entity by 2. So they get 200 extra health. Oh my god. Increase smell defense from 24 to 28. They increase charge from 20 to 18. This is actually a big buff to the white lions. So uh, when we use them in the garrisons, we might actually win more battles. Okay, this is the regiment of renown. Uh, Mel defense for the Lydian rivers of bows. Uh, Reproductal Riders uh, increase male defense of 22 23. Not male defense, well, farm. Uh, thank you, yours. Frost Worm uh, increase male attack from 44 to 45. Increase male from 44 to 41. For single, but plus one, plus one. Well, it's, uh, uh, one, it's the only flying unit they have, so this, uh, this is helpful. I worry about this uh, bullshit here. They're reducing the cost on the mammoths. Next patch, we're going to be reading uh, nerfs to the mammoths just because they made them cheaper first. So this patch, they reduce costs on more mammoths, so they, you know, more accessible multiplayer. Next patch, they're going to get minus one melee attack. How the fuck am I going to play with my, my war mammoths if they get their attack nerfed? Instead of readjusting the cost back up. God damn. Uh, Skaven Plague Monks increase Mel Deeps from 24 25. That's actually pretty good. Uh, this is like, a, I think, the third to the fourth page where they, these guys get plus one, plus one. Storm Vermin with a Sword of Shield get plus two melee attack. Nice. Nice. This is actually good stuff. Put them closer uh, to the Tomb Guard uh, uh, with swords. I do uh, want to see the Sword and Shield Storm Vermin actually viable. They're, uh, they're okay, okay, but uh, I, I wish that they're better. This is actually pretty good uh, for them. Uh, Sonnen Halberts got buffed again. One more attack. Last, I think last patch they got one defense. I guess in five patches they might actually get plus five, you know, like proper buff. Uh, give, it your, give or take like 25 months. Uh, poison Wind Mortar uh, contact effect max number of entities lower from 20, 30 to 28. Hmm. 
So less poison damage, huh? You uh, you don't just use the the regular or halberds. You mix them, Akatama. You mix them. This is not like uh, instead of having six halberds, uh, there is nothing wrong with having two uh, swords and uh, four halberds, for example. That's the only case. Uh, Tomb Kings, Lich Priest, Shadows now available. Nehikara Warriors got one more male defense. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Necro Sphinx got five more leadership. Necro uh, Polis Knights. Okay, keep buffing the snakes. We might actually use them one day. Uh, one more damage, two more AP, three defense. Not bad, not bad. Three more updates, and uh, we might actually build that overpriced building instead of something else. Uh, what do we have here? Vampire Coast, Bloated Corpses, uh, new tool that explains their ability, Rolling Promedians, so who cares, who cares, who cares, who cares, okay. What is this? Vampire Counts, okay. Vargeists got uh, one more melee defense. You know, guys, uh, the thing that I missed on the uh, Scar Sneak and the, in the Grimgor, I'm just uh, starting to realize all this white and uh, getting darker outside is kind of flashy for my eyes. I just kind of lost the line of text here. Lose the line of text where, where it's what. Just basically highlight the, the right uh, part. One more melee defense for the Vargeists. One more melee defense for the Hex Raids. So, uh, Terror guys got a massive 10 melee attack boost, but got lost the anti large 10. Oh, this is actually a huge buff to Terror guys. This is a huge buff to Terror guys. Very nice. Now they'll be killing uh, uh, infantry faster. This is a still very strong anti large. This is this is not a, this is just a huge buff. Huge buff to Terror guys. They also buffed the Striga Vampire Lord on a Terror Guys by 5. But nobody will plays this shit. Okay, uh, what do we have here? Uh, Warriors of Chaos, Gorbis Chair, new icon. Uh, leadership for Chaos Sorcerer Lord, Stroll's cost. Accuracy increased slightly, like the Hellcans needed it. Like, you know, from a million accuracy to a million and uh, 0001 accuracy. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, the Demon Spew Forsaken. What the fuck is this shit, man? What? what? They m Why do I keep nerfing the Forsaken? So they attack slower, but have two more AP at the cost of two regular damage. Nobody even uses this shit in campaign. Hell Cannon, Artillery Piece, HP from 700 to 950, okay, this is uh, nice. This will make it uh, harder to destroy. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a buff to the AI. Dads get one melee defense, Tricking get one melee attack. Oh, this is actually nice for Tricking. One, one is actually uh, a buff, noticeable. Because they have such low attack. Spells and abilities. Projectile spell damage reliability. Previously, these abilities had a hidden rule which prevented them from causing friendly fire for the first two seconds of their lifetime and shrunk them for the first three seconds of their lifetime. Both of these rules have been removed as they were unintentional. The net result is that the following abilities should feel more liable when casting at short ranges, with moderate increases to the size of their projectiles. So, a bunch of uh, the uh, projectile abilities. Well, who the fuck knows what this does, we're gonna have to see in the game. Moving on. Uh, summoning spells, army capacity limit. Uh, previously some summoning spells could uh, not be cast if the army was already at 20 uh, unit cap. Uh, this was inconsistently rolled out uh, and negatively impacted gameplay. Poor Krell, we can't summon him because, you know, reasons. This cap has now been removed and all summon spells can be cast regardless of if the army is at a capacity or not. What is this? Quick battle and MP wins of ch magic change. Previously, wins of magic all the same rules as a campaign, and the starting amount was randomly rolled between two numbers. So this has now been changed in MP and quick battles, where the starting amount should now always be 15. I guess they're getting ready for esports. Uh, spells rebalance. Flesh to stone. 
Uh, winds of magic also reduce from 7 to, to 6. Overcast and uh, winds of magic also reduce from 11 to 10. Uh, I guess they want, want people to cast this spell. This is Arm buff in the Lord of Life, if I'm not mistaken. Wind Blast, Overcast, AP damage reduce, or they can nerf Wind Blast again. God damn it, what the fuck? Brain Burst, Overcast range uh, increase, remove from spell. God damn, they ruined Brain Bursta. Why? Overcast range increase, uh, remove from spell. God damn, multiplayer, why would they remove that? Was, uh, this spell was good. Occam's Mind Razor, Mino Magic cost reduced from 10 to 9. It's early cast, it's a damage buff. It's actually a massive damage buff, but everybody says, ooh, that's strong, but you know, nobody casts that shit. Because it's like, if you want to get big dick, uh, you only cast that shit if you want to get big dick numbers. It's the only reason, really. Uh, or cast Mino Magic cost reduced from, uh, Warp Lightning Explosion Radius reduced from 6 to 5 meters. So they nerfed the Warp Lightning. So it's gonna be doing less damage. Still gonna be probably very effective. Savage Dominion. Winds of Magic cost increase from 15 to 18. Six more seconds, but three more powers. I guess uh, multiplayer stuff. The summon spells are uh, really crappy in single player. They always constantly just change them because of multiplayer. It is, uh, that's why they suck. Okay, it looks like just multiplayer stuff. Bunch of abilities here. Uh, they remove the uh, the uh, the leadership effect from uh, Crash the Week. Multiplayer, I guess. Uh, Everqueen scored guard but still Alon better Alon fixed the ability not the deta detailing the improved window magic power reserves. I think they did because they get blood roar now, but only on a mount, not on foot. Felix's blood owed now only affects himself and one other friendly card. The closest valid friendly card is chosen. So only works on one more. Instead of the uh, all. Change target behavior of abilities to make them easier to use. Instead of them, you know, uh, you know, stepping wrong, huh? Spider the, uh, over the bad moon. And now under large and damage buff for allies in an area. Is that the, uh, the little war ability? All the Nars, Mislead, and Ixia Stride Doppelgang. Units spawned by disabilities will now be spawned at the same health or as the parent unit. The entities in the units spawned by Doppelgang also had their mass infinitely reduced in order to reduce the ability effectiveness as a makeshift snare slow. Sword of Techless. All the effects removed now grant plus 20 wins of magic reserve and 0 0.3 region mod. So instead of turning him into a fighter, he now gets even more power. He, I guess he doesn't need the old effects because of Phoenix, and now he gets even more power. They give Techless all the power. So how much power are we going to give to Techless? Yes, all the power. Proving Grounds beta changes. Uh, we recently ran an experimental beta called the Proving Grounds so there's some more extreme changes to the in-game systems and mechanics. We implemented uh, a few minor changes based on our learnings from beta feedback and may uh, look on our implementing more in future. Yeah, Techless is uh, uh, supposed to be uh, the, the best wizard after uh, Mazdamundi. After Mazdamundi is either Techless or, uh, or Nagash. The ones, the ones who are you know, still alive or living or... And then again, uh, uh, Lord Crow can appear, you know. The, the Morati, Malaki, the Manfred are also powerful wizards, but uh, you know, the Teclis is uh, still stronger in the lore.
Okay, what do we have here? Uh, mouse AI configuration frequency reduced. Frequency for AI to use over to join war reduce. Oh, praise Jesus. Yeah, Lord is just what she with the say KQ. We know all the strong the strongest wizards in the game. Teclis, Manfred, and Malekit. Pretty much. Follow for diplomatic events reduced. Air Vampire Counts uh, are now using basic strategic behavior instead of defensive behavior. One wing Malak is a strong wizard, he's flying on a badass dragon with uh, strong stats. That is a, a big part of it. Uh, auto resolve a specific system to ensure unit loss is disabled. What? But his casting is weak. What? Have you never been on Reddit and seen those million posts in the past? Malakid killing thousands of rats and shit like that. Dark magic is not weak. How to resolve a specific system to ensure unit loss is disabled. Units are generally less likely to be killed in the auto resolve. What is this? How to resolve a specific system to ensure unit loss is disabled? Units are generally less likely to be killed not to resolve. This is, uh, I guess, this could be a huge thing for the for the slayers and uh, hell cannons and uh, uh, sisters of slaughter. So you can actually uh, use these units without getting uh, irritated by the auto resolve. Auto resolve bonus against minor factions just for greenskins, dark elves, caven, and vampires. Praise Jesus. Skaven AI recruitment and construction improved. Updated AI victory region setup, which uh, the AI will prioritize a little more. Minor factions generally try to keep the regions out of other and other subcultures' influence. Major factions want to own it all. Vampire Coast focus on coastlines. Dwarves focus on mountains. Toon Kings focus on Southlands Desert. Empire territory focuses for Empire and Vampire Counts, Mountain and Vlad. Bretonian focus on Bretonian territory. Belegar, Scarcing, Equip, keep their Karak 8 peaks objective. High Elves and Dark Elves focus on Ulto and Dark Elves and Aladdin focus on Nagrand. This sounds like all to me too good to be true. Same as, uh, as this thing here. Uh... Diplomacy changes. Uh, Vampire Counts start at war with Stirland. Schwarzhafen starts at war with Auerland. Removed war between Irtain and Kotik in Moral Empires. Okay, that's pretty good. Reduce confederation likeliness uh, for Greenskins to diplomacy as they have uh, the Norse style confederation option now. And looks like uh, that's it, boys. This is all the changes. Some uh, a lot of a lot of good stuff, but. Uh, how much of this is, you know, true in fairy tale? We're gonna have to, you know, dig in, dig in, and uh, see for ourselves. We have a countdown uh, for the new DLC, so you guys know exactly when it's coming out. This is when we are starting. Uh, this is when we are starting uh, our uh, our campaigns. Uh, the plan is following. Uh, the last time uh, we did, you know. Even if we, uh, you guys want to see all the new factions, I don't really much care about everything. But you know, from the streamer, you know, is expected to you know to show everything. So last time we did uh, 70 turns with all three factions. We did a short campaign victory actually. Carnation was a little bit enjoyable. We did 70 turns with Malus, so we didn't finish. Uh, and we did 70 turns with uh, with the Chevalier de Lanes, which we did finish. The campaign is a joke, but this time we're gonna be doing things differently again. Uh, we're we'll having a long stream on the list day, starting with uh, Grom the Punch with his faction. Uh, probably five hours later, we'll be starting with uh, Altarion the Grim. That's gonna be planned for day one. Day two, uh, we'll be starting uh, with Azak in his new faction uh, for the first half of the stream, and the second half of the stream with Imrik. The other higher factions, so four new factions to start on day one. 
uh, all the two on day two. And uh, the plan is uh, to play all four factions to at least turn 150. After that point, uh, we might go for a short campaign victory, or uh, we might just, you know, reach critical mass and uh, move on to until all those campaigns, you know, are declared finish or a new campaign. We are probably gonna like to finish like half of them, and half of them, you know, are gonna be critical mass, or depending what's going on in the campaign. After that, uh, we're gonna be uh, starting some other campaigns, seeing you know how things are with the new patch. We're not gonna be doing any those tests with the beastmen, which feel like uh, spoiled totally the last update for me. Uh, made things kind of you know sour uh, when we were just you know AFKing with the beastmen and checking you know how the the, uh, the world is affected. We'll be uh, picking ignorance this time, and uh, the ignorance, you know, you know, ignorance is bliss, and we hopefully will be enjoying yourself until we discover the flaws again, which probably will be again. I feel like the order tide uh, uh, might still be too much, but who knows? We'll see. So those four, uh, and we'll be playing uh, on day three onwards. Uh, Probably at least two of each every day until we decide they are finished while working towards short campaign victory. Uh, minor demand requests are welcome if you guys want to request uh, campaigns. And uh, we'll be having a milestone campaign with Reichland, uh, no artillery. And also uh, there'll be a campaign, sellout campaign special uh, at the beginning of probably. Uh, June or in June, but definitely in June, uh, where we're playing one of the factions where you guys can donate to sabotage it. And if you actually sabotage the campaign, we'll be playing uh, Bloody Hands. So that's the next uh, quarter uh, uh, special campaign. They're gonna be one every three months, one every quarter of the year. So four total. This is gonna be it for the stream today. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, we're probably gonna be playing Skyrim or Gwent. Uh, we're done with uh, watching random stuff on YouTube. See you guys.